but uh, some um, uh, exercises before that uh, they do uh, to cover a little bit, not just the uh, separator, but also the field around it, uh, why we are doing it the way we are doing it. Um, why is this not going down? Page down? Oh, this mouse. Uh, so, in particular, uh, I will talk about St. George, and tomorrow I will then uh, talk about the recall separator, uh, SECA. Uh, in the lectures this morning, you learned how to uh, deal with uh, ion optical systems, like spectrometers, etc. Uh, in your tutorial, of course, you're always uh, looking at systems already. So we talked about the high resolution spectrometer dispersion matching and then uh, some remarks to the diagnostics and field measurements uh, that are always needed in um, spectrometer systems. Oops. So uh, let's look at an unusual place. An unusual place is shown here, uh, the uh, shadow of the moon on the earth. So if you're in this fortunate place, which happens from time to time, for a few minutes at one location, uh, then you can actually block out, uh, you, the sun is blocked out by the moon, and close by you can see something that is otherwise, because of the high contrast between the sun and this um, corona, you wouldn't be able to see. Uh, you can technically make a coronagraph, uh, like in this, uh, um, satellite SOHO, uh, which blocks out the sun, so you can even uh, during daylight or during the presence of the sun uh, see uh, the stars. So an unusual place, and we are also going with a separator to an unusual place, uh, but... Oh. oh, this is now interesting. It comes now sequentially. So, if you look at this if you look at the sun directly, you can still uh, do that. Not, of course, with your naked eye, but if you use a narrow band filter, uh, the um, H alpha line, uh, then you can see actually fantastic, uh, exquisite details of the sun. Uh, due to the difference between the uh, normal uh, wavelengths of the um, uh, photosphere and the, just this narrow band. This is shown here. So, we are, will be using, uh, so this is just analogy to what we are using here, we will be using the magnetic separation uh, of the beam and reaction products in a spectrometer with zero degree, kind of as a warm up uh, for the record separator. In the K600 or Grand Dryden spectrometer, we have actually looked at zero degree uh, the helium 3T reaction, which is the easiest, PT, alpha alpha, PP prime, which is the toughest, and of course, possibly other uh, reactions. So the beam is stopped in special Faraday cup because of the, the B rho separation of the beam and the, and the um, uh, recoils that we want to look at, or the reaction products. So this is the most difficult case of PP prime. Uh, you have the beam, here as dotted line, going through a spectrometer, uh, exiting here to a special Faraday cup, and because the inelastic lines, uh, here excitation energy 8.3 MeV up to 20 MeV, is slightly smaller by a few percent, you can actually look uh, at the uh, spectrum of uh, at these energies. That is shown here for the nickel PP prime um, uh, reaction at uh, 160 MeV and zero degree, virtually looking into the sun. So this is important because the um, gamma teller uh, spin flip states they're around this region, very large, as you see one of here. They're, so uh, this is an interesting uh, place uh, to study, and we have developed the methods uh, to uh, do that 
with the disk spectrometer and others. In the Grand Ryden spectrometer, uh, we have uh, used this not only for the PP prime, but also the helium 3T. Here, the B row of the tritons is two times larger than the uh, uh, helium 3 uh, uh, rigidity. So you have a Faraday cup already. The separation happens in dipole one, and not shown here is the Faraday cup sitting here, uh, which stops the helium three beam, and the tritons uh, twice as uh, rigid uh, goes to the focal plane. Uh, the uh, the PT reaction, the ratio is one point seven, so the Faraday cup is a little bit uh, down here, and for other reactions, uh, the separation is only by 10 to 25 percent, so you have another Faraday cup here. So at zero degree, uh, for instance, the helium three, uh, helium four, helium uh, six reaction is shown here uh, at zero degree. Uh, very nice spectrum, very clean, uh, the background very small. Now that works too. So, in the separate, uh, the in the nucleus synthesis in the in the cosmos uh, is summarized in this slide that Manuel showed you. We are interested in the RP process, which is uh, mainly the P gamma uh, process on radioactive beams. Here, I don't uh, need to uh, talk more about that. It's showing me something different than what I want. So the reason uh, why we uh, actually use recoil separators instead of measuring the, the, the reaction directly uh, is uh, because uh, we uh, want to reduce the background in St. George, despite the fact that we could make a neon uh, target, a stable beam, we are using inverse kinematics for the background reduction compared to the direct reaction. Uh, again, as Manuel has already explained to you, so uh, I'm not going into the details here. Uh, for, uh, for the um, SICAR, uh, we actually have to go to recoil uh, the inverse kinematics, uh, shown here again, what you learned already yesterday, for the reason that you cannot make a radioactive uh, target for the direct P gamma reaction. So the inverse kinematic is uh, the only way to actually do it. So St. George, uh, of course, like SICAR, uh, is designed to do particular reactions. So we always start with a list of reactions that we want to cover and look at the extreme angle uh, openings, the extreme uh, ranges uh, and the uh, B-row that is required and those we set then as design parameters. So uh, these are not real reaction parameters because not all reactions require all these parameters at the same time, but all these reactions are possible because the instrument is designed uh, that way. So now let's look at uh, back again at the ion optics of an achromatic magnet separator, just as a start uh, to get uh, to the recoil separator. If you have here a system with a triplet a dipole and a triplet, uh, then you have here dispersion and you can make a focus here. So this we call uh, the uh, part A. There's a part B, which actually reverses exactly the dispersion, so it's achromatic here. So if we crank now the ion optics, so you start uh, at uh, the with the transfer from uh, the in, uh, for the uh, section A, and then you have here uh, the at the intermediate uh, focus X as A11 X naught. Uh, A12 uh, theta naught, A16 uh, delta naught. And we require that there's a focus in the middle of the system. So that means this term is zero. We do the same thing for the second part. 
Uh, so the same thing here, except for the matrix elements are now uh, for the uh, second part B. Again, focus here. Now, if you substitute uh, in this equation here, uh, the uh, xi and set it here, uh, then after rearranging, we come to this uh, equation. So x in the focal plane is this term, and it depends, of course, on x naught at the entrance of the system and uh, on the momentum. So if you require now that this is an achromatic system, uh, then this coefficient has to be zero. So if we solve that for the dispersion of the initial part, A16, uh, then we get minus B16 divided by B11. So this is actually the dispersion, uh, if you remember this morning, the dispersion uh, condition is dispersion over magnification of the spectrometer, part B, and here, of course, we didn't put any uh, kinematic uh, coefficients, so the C, T is equal to 1 and K equal to 0, uh, but otherwise it's dispersion matching. So what did we learn from that? From that we learn if we make D over M of the second system uh, minus B over M and set the dispersion at the first sec section, then the system is achromatic from the beginning to the end. So this is the principle of the dispersion matching, and that's also the principle of making an achromatic beam at this location in a system like this. So we can apply that now uh, to see what we can do with it in terms of uh, separation of uh, reaction products. So in this case, we have used uh, for this principle, we have built a uh, separator uh, at the KVI. It's called a uh, trim separator, and we have used it uh, to uh, create uh, sodium 21 uh, by taking a stable sodium 20, uh, neon 21 uh, reaction in inverse kinematics on a hydrogen target. A neutron comes out, and the good part here is that provides a different bureau, so we can use uh, this dispersion, the dispersion here to block out most of the beam. That is what you see here in the um, analysis and the detection of uh, the um, uh, silicon detector, delta E information here, and we take the time of flight horizontally here from the spectrometer. And you see here the uh, reaction products, you see much diminished uh, the huge beam uh, by blocking it out in the center is still here. And then, of course, there are many other uh, uh, products uh, still around. Now, in this case, what we do, we put in the middle here a wedge. Uh, the wedge is a degrader. We talked about what the degrader is. It's a piece of foil which degrades the beam. And since the energy loss in such a degrader is proportional to z square over Vm, we can separate uh, isotopes with different uh, z. And if the z in a recoil separator, we of course pre select in the first section the z or the q, we call it in that case, we have also then a mass separation. So in principle, a uh, degrader here is uh, able uh, to separate uh, the different uh, masses. Wedge, it is called in this case because if you take here a foil which is with constant thickness, then you destroy the achromaticity to a certain degree so that you can uh, counteract by making this a wedge or a curved foil, uh, but it's nothing else than a degrader with a little different uh, shape. Uh, we had Earlier, we had the question uh, what an attenuator is. An attenuator is something where you uh, sample out uh, a large, uh, from a large beam at the iron source uh, with a grid to a smaller beam, with the hope that the uh, emittance is not changed because you want to use this uh, remaining faint beam to actually measure the emittance. 
while in the case of a degrader, you degrade the beam and you also enlarge the uh, emittance as we have uh, learned. So, if you do that here, this comes up sequentially, put the degrader in, then we have here a mass separation and what you are left with is with the reaction products that you want and still a little bit neon 20 in this case for that particular experiment which uh, studied the decay of uh, sodium 21, the stable neon 20 didn't do anything so that was good enough. Now this is how the uh, Trimp, uh, recoil separa uh, fragment separator uh, worked or looked like in the floor plan. You come with the beam from here, you have here a hydrogen cell in uh, the recoil separator for astrophysics, St. George and uh, um, Sekar, we cannot use any cell with windows because the energy is so low, but at these high, high enough energies, uh, you, we had actually a cell with the entrance and exit window. Uh, you have here a doublet, a triplet would be uh, better, but a doublet was good enough. Uh, two dipoles, uh, a doublet again, and here is the intermediate uh, focus. And uh, then uh, the second, almost similar uh, part uh, to uh, undo the dispersion of an uh, achromatic uh, spot here. The iron optics is, was studied and implemented here. So you see here the different rays. Uh, let's look at the, uh, at the different momenta. Here you have the first dipole. So you see here the uh, particles with different momenta plus minus are split here, uh, enhanced by the second dipole and uh, the, the dispersion is undone here. So the dispersion here is small. This is a third order calculation. So you see here uh, higher order aberrations, which are not corrected because it was difficult or impossible to do. Uh, but for a fragment separator of that type, which collected the particles then in, uh, in uh, collection cell, uh, this was good enough. Uh, but for high resolutions, this would, would not be good enough. Uh, you see also the acceptances are studied here so that we know how large the magnets are. So everything uh, was derived from these ion optical calculations. Now there are many, uh, th so this is a principle of a fragment separator. Uh, and uh, I'm just mentioning here that you have the fragments of the A1900 uh, here at MSU and for the effort there will be another fragment separator. And they work with degraders or wedges. This cannot be done for a, uh, for a recoil separator where the energy is low. If you would put any material in the somewhere in the middle of the spectrometer, uh, the recoil separator, uh, you would uh, not be able to do any measurement. Different charge states appear and the, the emittance would uh, not allow any measurement. So we cannot do that. Uh, consequence is, and the difference between a fragment separator and a recoil separator is the low energy, and therefore wedge doesn't work, we need a wind filter. A wind filter has no material in between, and as you have already uh, learned yesterday in Manuel's talk, uh, it can separate the masses. So, uh, since we are here at this point, uh, I want to show you something which is not really related to the uh, recoil separator, but it is a nice application uh, and uh, it's called the gas filled separator. Uh, the reason why it is used is the following. If you make the separation, as I've shown with the trim fragment separator uh, or any other separator, then you have the different charge states unless you are at very high energies. Uh, at very high energies, of course, the irons would be totally stripped, but for lead, for instance, even at uh, energy, energy is as high as uh, uh, two tesla meter or something like this, uh, you have a mass distribution, uh, charge distribution. So if you want, uh, this is not the beam that you can use, which you would like to do after selection of the fragment separator, 
So you would be limited to one charge uh, state. One start set gives you maybe 10% of the total beam, so very inefficient. Now, as suggested by uh, Paul et al., if you fill the spectrometer with a gas, so here you have a good vacuum, 10 to minus 6, you fill it with gas, helium, inert gas, helium, or argon, uh, then you will come into the situation where the uh, charge state changes constantly within the, within the gas, and uh, that gives them a path like this. So if you increase the pressure, uh, then the charges actually come together uh, to one spot. That spot becomes narrower and narrower. And of course, if you go to 24 tor and higher, uh, then it again, it spreads out. So there's an optimum somewhere in, in the middle. So the iron optics for trim was so that the first part was used just as a beam line and the second, second short part, all this has to happen in a, in a short spectrometer, the iron optics shown here uh, for the vacuum part, not with the gas filled because that is a more complicated question and uh, of course you cannot just do that. So this was actually the measurement that we did uh, for 7 MeV per nucleon, uh, led to a six beam to show that everything works. Uh, we didn't uh, change the position of the detector, but to just used uh, bedding magnet three to scan through. And if uh, at vacuum, 10 to minus six tor, you can see here the different, uh, the different charge states. We didn't uh, show here uh, all the plots and probably didn't even measure all of them but only the maximum. So you have to think about all the charts that here with the maximum at these dots. And if you then fill it with the three millibar, then you get a narrower spot, not as narrow as for a single charge state, but hopefully narrow enough for your application. So this is uh, what the gas filling uh, does to a system. So now, Summarizing the difference between a fragment separator and a recoil separator. The fragment separator uses at higher energies, uh, is used at higher energies to produce efficiently rare isotopes and wedges are possible and actually used. A recoil separator works at very low energies to study astrophysical reactions and we need wind filters, despite the fact that wind filters are complicated and um, uh, very sensitive devices because of the electrostatic fields and all the complications with that, uh, but uh, they have to be used. And that's why you see, I've seen in the tour yesterday, the big uh, uh, wind filter, or at least the magnet of it already installed. So consequence, I just mentioned the wedges and record separator under the wind filter. So, as Manuel already uh, mentioned, we have, uh, we are not the first uh, with uh, St. George and uh, uh, Sekar. Uh, we are somewhere in the front uh, of the design of these instruments. One of the most advanced uh, systems is the Dragon system, which was built for a P gamma reaction at masses around, uh, up to around uh, 2030 or so designed for that and it has uh, of course a gas jet target as we have. It has a first section uh, to select the charge state. If you would allow charges beyond going beyond that you would get back huge backgrounds from that and never uh, get the uh, separation between recoils and beam in the focal plane. So uh, first charge selection that will limit the intensity uh, from the full uh, uh, beam uh, by to about 30-40% or something like this, uh, but uh, at least that is possible. Uh, the, the dragon, the difference between Dragon and St. George and uh, Sekar is that we're using wind filter where the, uh, uh, where the uh, mass separation is done and in this year they're using separate electro di electric dipoles, as shown here, and um, um, and uh, uh, magnetic dipoles. So this dipole here, oops, uh, magnetic dipole here, and a second uh, electric dipole, and then the final selection here. Uh, 
so I will show that for uh, Sekar we will have uh, a different uh, philosophy, uh, but that will come la uh, later. But this is here uh, a very nice uh, separator. So this is uh, for design purposes, uh, a calculation with many, many uh, rays uh, from the uh, authors of this uh, uh, design article. Now I, have, I can go through these. They are uh, fragment sep uh, record separators uh, of different type. Manuel has shown them yesterday, so I can skim through that. Uh, this is Erna, and you see here uh, the uh, wind filter in the beam line before uh, the target. Uh, I think the target is here. Uh, in order to uh, eliminate the contamination in the carbon beam of oxygen 16, because that's what you want to measure, and if it comes already from the beam, you will really have a background problem. Uh, these are the ion optical calculations. Of course, all this is based on ion optical calculations and the design. Uh, as you know by now, uh, this is uh, the uh, pro uh, a prototype uh, designed by uh, Manuel and used by Manuel in his uh, thesis, where he learned uh, everything about, including those things which are difficult to do in a wind filter based uh, re record separator, uh, basically made from spare parts. So uh, and uh, for one reaction, which he did in his thesis there. So, the record separator St. George uh, is based on the reactions, and here are the design parameters again uh, mentioned. Uh, we are limited to alpha gamma reaction because the budget didn't allow us uh, to introduce, to build a second wind filter section. So that can be done later if needed, um, but we are limited to uh, that mainly because of the limited mass separation in the existing uh, beam filter. This is the layout of St. George. So you come with the beam, here a doublet, uh, then two dipoles, and here a focal plane. This focal plane makes the uh, charge selection due to the momentum uh, rigidity difference uh, based on the charge state. So after this, you only have one charge state. Uh, then there's a section which uh, focuses, uh, has a focal plane here, and it has, uh, the main function is uh, to go through the wind filter, uh, which makes a mass separation. From here on, you cannot put in a detector here because the beam will be stopped here very close. And uh, if you do that, uh, then you create background, uh, slit edge scattering or anything like that. So putting a detector here uh, would uh, probably be uh, impossible because of the background. So we have what we call the clean up, uh, clean up section here before we put a detector here. So clean up is not the uh, full function of this uh, system. It does clean up, but it also prepares the beam uh, for uh, for uh, the acceptance of the detector system. So you have a certain detector system here that you need to make the measurements. And uh, for that purpose, you have here uh, this section and it can uh, accommodate uh, whatever acceptance you have uh, to the detector. Now the wind filter principle, I have your slide for that here. Uh, Manuel explained that already yesterday, the force uh, if you cross E and B fields uh, and uh, make the magnitude E over B, uh, the, the particles with the velocity V, that's why it's called velocity filter, are uh, then passed through and everything else is thrown out. So we will pass through uh, because we adjust uh, E over B uh, for the recoils. We pass through the recoils and everything else we throw out with a certain mass uh, resolution. So this is uh, how the wind filter for St. George looks. Here are the field calculations. The good field region is limited to a relatively small uh, region in the center. Here the magnetic field, 
uh, and here the uh, electro field. And just uh, as an example, this is not the Sir George <laughs> wind filter, just to give you an idea how a wind filter, uh, wind filter uh, looks. So this is the ion optics. Uh, now there are many rays and they're all numbered. So we are not going through the exercise here, uh, but uh, I will just give you, uh, to understand the system, you can uh, study all these rays and then uh, find out. I will just go through a few examples. So if you take, for instance, the ray number five, which is very close to the beam, uh, then you see here it changes, number five, it changes only the X position. So here you see the magnification. So if you go from here, the magnification increases, then magnification becomes zero, stays close to the beam, and is at the end here uh, also relatively uh, small. So uh, that ray is important because when you design a system like this, then the magnification may become huge, and uh, you don't know why you don't get any, any resolution or resolving power, and it's because of that. So that's an important ray, and this is a result of the design study and many uh, iteration fits and etc. Now the dispersion. If you look at uh, ray number five and number uh, four, it has a plus 13 percent, and number six minus 10 percent uh, asymmetric. That is the acceptance. Uh, so you see here in the first dipole B1. Uh, the dispersion uh, becomes large. It is even, gets even larger in uh, the bending magnet 3, which adds to it. The dispersion stays here very high, uh, go, becomes smaller here because we, we counteract it with a, uh, with a second set. Just remember the uh, system with A and B, uh, which we have used to undo the dispersion to make an achromatic system that is built in here despite the many quadruples in between, that is the basic function. So you see here, the beam becomes, uh, uh, becomes uh, the, uh, okay, the dispersion becomes small here, uh, meaning here, the, uh, uh, the matrix element one, two, one, six becomes zero, and it also almost stays, it, it changes a little bit change a little bit uh, again here after that is going six I don't see it anymore uh, so that would be the angular dispersion if you just go with this ray through a point then you have the dispersion zero but anywhere in front and behind the dispersion becomes different if you go here tangentially into the central ray then also the angular dispersion is zero now here we need mainly the dispersion zero, but it would be nice not to be sensitive. So angular dispersion is very small, to say the least. So uh, this, and of course the acceptances for that we have plus minus uh, 40 milliradian for St. George. So in order to design the elements and pass through uh, for the design values, these rays are shown. So all these rays to give you information here, oh, this is a focal plane for the quadrupole, uh, for the, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the Q, uh, the charge state. You see here, uh, there's dispersion. So the same angles, different angles, but the diff uh, same angles, but different. So they are focused here, focused here, focused here for the different momenta, which are represented by these dots. Uh, what we are interested in is also the mass separation in the focal plane after the wind filter. The focal plane here is made to have a focus, small dispersion, angular dispersion, so that the full cone of uh, many rays here, uh, different, uh, the different, uh, in the kinematics you calculated that, the different uh, momenta, they're all here crunched into one, uh, one uh, small region, uh, higher order corrected as much as possible, uh, so to get a, a high mass separation here. The beam, which is here one-tenth of the one mass unit, uh, which seems to be good enough for uh, or overdone uh, for a mass difference of four for the alpha gamma reaction, up to masses 40, that would be one-tenth, so the separation you would say well is overdone 
but as Manuel already showed you yesterday, and we will go into a little bit more details <coughs> tomorrow for the St. George separator, this beam here is huge. So here, you have, if you have nano pair, you tend to the nine particles, and here the beam is a few particles per second if you're lucky. So uh, there will be a tail, and that's why we need the mass separation has to be much, much more than just separating masses of two equal, uh, equal uh, peaks. So this is uh, shown here. And then, of course, here's the cleanup section. You see here, the higher orders are not perfectly corrected uh, because also not needed. There's a detector system, and everything just has to fit into the detector. Uh, otherwise, uh, the higher orders have to be corrected here, but not uh, here, and that was then also uh, not done. Vertical, uh, vertical envelope here shown, usually smaller than the horizontal. It's not that as critical, but also has to be has to be designed properly. So this here shows the situation of a real beam. So while the calculation before uh, was including all possible reactions, this is one particular reaction that you see already. Uh, the beam is small, is, uh, the envelope is much smaller than the design uh, reaction. Uh, however, uh, you have to consider that there's also, a, in, the, in the target, there's also a, a blow up, and you want to stay away from, uh, uh, from multiple scattering on the, on the surfaces. So it is good that the beam is uh, smaller, it will anyhow uh, blow up in reality, that is not considered in this ion optical calculation. So if you come here with a five plus beam, or several charge states are actually involved, but the six plus is separated from the five plus. Uh, supposedly here, the, uh, the most abundant charge state. Uh, then you separate it here between B1 and B2, and a slit here in the uh, in the uh, injected here in the uh, uh, excess uh, port in front of uh, B1, which is available, you can see that at the uh, SECAR, uh, and uh, so separated. A uh, four plus not shown, but it will go then to the other side and also be separated uh, as well as uh, other possible charge states. The five plus, of course, of beam and reaction products are going straight in the middle along the central ray because there's no. Uh, the momentum is different or the magnetic rigidity until they hit the wind filter. The wind filter knows these are two different masses and they separated not on the basis of the charge state uh, but or the uh, rigidity which is uh, very similar uh, but on the basis of uh, the mass, mass difference. So 5 plus for the um, uh, for which reaction is that the reaction is neon 22 alpha gamma magnesium 26 at 4.6 MeV. So there's a nice separation here, and then the cleanup section prepares the beam with a full envelope, that it guides the beam into the detector. So uh, now, one uh, aspect of the uh, Wien filter is the following. The Wien filter condition is E over B equal to uh, is identical. So then if they are normalized, they're here inside the spectrometer, inside the Wien filter, they are, it's constant here normalized to one. If you go now into the fringe field, then you see the fringe field for the electric field and the fringe field of the uh, magnetic field. Now the electric field fringe field drops much quicker because the gap here is much smaller than the, the, the gap in the, uh, in the magnet. You have seen the, the magnet gap uh, for SECAR, you can walk through, and the, wind, the electrostatic devices are not yet there. I'll show a picture in a minute. It's only, the gap is only 22 centimeter uh, horizontally. So that has as a consequence that in the fringe field, the E over B, it changes, it goes away from what? So the wind filter conditions are fulfilled and that will uh, ruin your, or at least adversely affect 
your mass separation. The change here, if you just take uh, conventional, uh, conventional edges here and don't do anything on the, uh, on the uh, clamping of field clamp in the, um, in the magnetic field, uh, then you will have here a problem. So this is solved here by fanning out uh, for St. George, by fanning out the electrodes here, which makes that fringe field, that E fringe field, which dropped quite quickly, uh, a little bit longer. Uh, and the B field was here, uh, the field clamp is uh, not shown here, it just indicated there is a field clamp here. Uh, that field clamp will shorten the magnetic field. And uh, at least for the central ray, this is then done so that they are identical in the E over B. Do I have the next slide? No, I don't, uh, I don't have it. Oh, for the St. George, I, I show that in a more detail. That will be tomorrow. Uh, you see that the E over B will be, oh, here you see the E over B, sorry. So it, it's reduced to deviations of the order of a, a couple of percent, which is acceptable. So that is uh, that. Now, so this was uh, uh, mainly the main properties of uh, St. George. Maybe uh, we want to make a, a short interruption before I go to Seca and uh, give you the opportunity to ask uh, questions. Okay. Well, the SICAR is the topic of tomorrow, but maybe we have a couple of minutes just to give you uh, the first uh, uh, idea about how we, uh, the properties of SICAR. SICAR is, a radi is for radio capture on unstable beams. It is different from St. George because we don't have uh, radioactive beams of that uh, type, uh, but that will be different here with EFRIT. We will have the world's most intense uh, radioactive beams that they are, so uh, we will make use of that uh, for the astrophysics program. Uh, so they can only be measured in inverse kinematics. Uh, so it's not only a background question uh, like in St. George, but also a more fundamental question that otherwise you cannot even make these re reactions of the RP process uh, on radioactive beams where the astrophysical path goes. It's designed to make use of the high intensity EFRIC beams. Uh, we can go up to masses 65 so the whole path uh, of the RP process, which is now thought to end uh, somewhere around 65, can be studied. Uh, which is So that is beyond that what the, the Dragon uh, the record separator uh, will probably be do, or at least uh, may be able to do it better uh, because of the higher mass separation that will be shown. Uh, the beam reaction is 10 to, 10 to the 14. So that means we want to put 10 to the 14 particles uh, into the system and distinguish one of them. So the, spec the record separator itself has to provide for that purpose a mass separation of uh, about 750. Uh, and uh, the separator itself will do 10 to the uh, 14 and the detector system will do then the rest. If you have a beam of 10 to the 9, you cannot even measure. So we need to get down where we can measure. Once we can measure and we have that good mass separation, then the detector system can kick in and help uh, that uh, beam rejection. Uh, SECAR has four ion optical sections. Uh, the charge selection, uh, the first wind filter, the second wind filter. Uh, you see the size of the wind filter. If we would make one wind filter uh, to make the mass, full mass separation, that would be a impractical uh, large uh, wind filter. In addition, that there are other advantages to having several sections uh, to reduce the background and, uh, and uh, so on. 
Second we enter, then, then the cleanup section. Uh, the energy range 0 0.3 to 4 MeV, and all that uh, the design parameters are summarized here and derived from the reactions uh, that are listed in this list up to argon, uh, the arsenic uh, 65 p gamma. You see all the angle acceptances mainly defined plus minus 25, that is more than the plus minus 15 of the kinematics reaction because of the. Uh, blow up of the uh, emittance in the uh, gas jet or cell uh, and uh, the maximum uh, the maximum uh, b rho comes uh, from this reaction here uh, so uh, we specify is it already done here No, they are just, uh, I, I show more details to, uh, tomorrow what the spectrometers are. So, this is the first glimpse at uh, SICAR, and uh, tomorrow in the morning uh, I will talk a little bit more detail about uh, the SICAR system. Thank you, George. Yeah.